Well, in the springtime, we see anglers that we don't see the rest of the year, right? Your lakes and your rivers, your ponds are packed with bass anglers. So how do we deal with this pressure? And I've really started to think about bass fishing in the spring, like fishing bus stops, okay? Fishing those migration routes with those stopping points and getting off the bank, you know, another cast length, two casts away, helps me to get in the right mindset to find those. Now, I'm gonna be using searching lures, okay? If I was up there real shallow, I might be using something different, but when I'm looking for these migration stops or these bus stops, I wanna cover some water big time. It's important to keep in mind that these little stops, okay, how I deal with the springtime fishing pressure, these migration stopping points can be so small. They can be the slightest depression, okay, a ditch. They can be a stump, they can be a single rock. So when we find them, it is so important that you keep, you know, a mental note of that positioning of, of your boat or if you're standing on the shoreline, you know, with the angle of your cast, you try to need to try to repeat all that stuff. Because if you miss it five foot one way or the other, there's a really good chance you're not going to get bit. So make it repeatable, do your best when you catch one to drop a marker buoy, drop a waypoint, whatever you need to do to really hold on that spot and see if you can repeat it again and again and again. And the cool thing is, you know, once you wear out that bite, let's say you catch five, six or 10 on that spot, and maybe I'm using a deep diver, I can put that down and then pick up something else, okay? That Carolina rig or maybe a shaky head or, you know, drag a jig, whatever it might be, but you can usually get that bite going again, at least for a little bit. Now you may be thinking, Steve, holy cow, how am I gonna find these things, right? Well, you can do some homework ahead of time. You know, you can go ahead and do some scanning with your electronics. You can go ahead and use something like the Fish Brain app that's got Navionics maps built into it and sit there on your couch and do some scouting, looking for migration routes. Google Earth is a great one with the historical imagery slider. And probably the best aspect of, you know, dealing with the spring pressure and looking for these migration stopping points is you're going to catch bass that are pre-spawn and post-spawn. There's always bass in different stages of the spawn, okay? So you're going to get them on the way up and on the way back and these areas, depending on the intensity of the spawn at that moment, that, you know, few days or week, is it can refill pretty quickly, which is super exciting. You may really hit it really good on one day, come back a couple days later and hit it even better. And then maybe the next day there's nothing, but the next day they're back again. So these spots can just keep reloading throughout the entire spawning process, which is really, really worth the time and effort and a great way to deal with that heavy springtime bass fishing pressure. And hey, if you wanna watch a video on making extra long casts and how it can help us in this searching process, go ahead and watch this one right here and make sure that you go out and encourage someone today. You never know how you might just change their life. For The Bass Fishing Life, I'm your host, Steve Rogers.